Hi, Bremi. I got you for attendance here. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Samuel Neal, I got you for attendance. Yep. Hello. Hello. So let me ask you this. Is my voice too loud or is it okay? It's okay. Can you hear the piano? Is it okay? Yep. Yeah. One more thing. Let's see. Boom. 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 How about the music? Is it is it a lot louder or is it okay? It's okay. Is it a lot louder than like my voice or the piano? Not really. No. All right. I, I just noticed what the, like one of the first videos I did, the music was really loud when I played it. Now I just picked a piece of music, so they're all recorded at different levels because of their from YouTube. How about that one? Is it too soft? Anybody? That one that one's okay. Um I don't know, maybe it's just a personal preference, but that could stand to be a little louder. Yeah, you're probably yeah. right. The, the the problem is 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 most of these were re recorded off of YouTube or recorded off of actually I think off of Noxos Music Library. And each one of them has a different volume, you know what I mean? And I did I did then try to normalize them. Um but depending on what happened further down in the piece of music, um the normalization would only can only do so much. Yeah. All right, let me go back to Zoom here. It's the two of us, yay, or the three of us, I should say. Um, well, at this point, I'm going to start the class because we're five minutes into it. So, all right, at this point, you should be seeing the book. Is that true? Mm hmm. All right, Carl Carter, I got you for attendance. All right. Oh, I thought my thing. I've been yes, talking sir. the whole time. I thought it was music. Thank you. But I can see the book too. All right, so we can see the book. Yeah. I'm I'm working on rearranging my screen because it it always gets in the way. The, the um the Zoom does. All right, so la last week we we talked about the phrase. So we understand the basic premise of the phrase. And at this point, we're now talking about um, grouping phrases together. It's, it's an additive process, uh, which we learned last, uh, last time when we talked about two-part binary form. Uh, put a couple phrases together, they become a period. Put a couple periods together, they become a part. You put two parts together, you get two-part binary form. And that was that graph. I don't know where it was. Uh, I'm not going to go any further. It, 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 it's in the second chapter. All right. But anyways, phrase groupings. So the first thing we really got is a, um, uh, a two phrase period. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> it really is the most prevalent type of period that was uh, is composed in two phrases. So you get others, but most of them are two phrases. The phrases within the two phrase period usually stand in a question and answer relationship. And in fact, we recognize it by calling them an antecedent and consequent phrase. So the question relation, it ends, but it leaves you hanging, and then the other one starts up again, and then it fulfills it with a better cadence, okay? So let's uh, let's take a listen to um, the two phrase period. Um, this is uh, Dvorak, and okay. 
we're gonna play this first piece here. <laughs> Scale degree two. Scale degree one. Here it is again. And on scale degree two, this is five chord. So let's see. All right, so when, when we look at this, this is the first phrase right here. And if I was marking up my score, I would, uh, man, I don't know why I decided to do that again. This is now driving me. took me all the way back to the beginning of chapter two. So here, if I was marking something on a score, I would do something like this. And I would draw a line at the end of the phrase. Okay. And then I would draw another line at the end of the next phrase. And, uh, I would I would actually, you know, type like what this chord is. I I know we only have the melody here, but that's scale degree two, and scale degree two is a dominant chord. I would write that down there, um, and I would do something like write H C for half cadence, okay, and then and then this one I would write something here like uh, one, and this is probably five here in the key of G. The 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 five chord is D, F sharp, A, and maybe C. So we have a D, a D, a G, a G, A. So this is like a, a, a neighbor tone going to this, just so you know, going to F sharp or, no, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's not. It's going to A right here. So we have this note, then it displaces itself and it goes up to the A. So we've got D and A and D, and in the harmony, we probably have the rest of the notes. So I would be writing five, one. And so I would do that in, in some way like, um, well, it doesn't like me today. Well, I'm control it. Uh, let's try it again. If I wrote some sort of box here, then I believe that I can type into the thing. Oh, well, sorry about that. I'll figure it out. But anyways, um, the main, the main thing to understand, we have two phrases and the first one ends on a half cadence and it isn't complete. And then it's followed by another one. That's really the same material. All right, it starts out exactly the same. It changes right about here, okay? And it subsides and stops, all right? So, so then we have, and that's what I was just kind of explaining, this, this uh, antecedent phrase right here. Ends inconclusive like a question and the consequence frame right here that ends in an answer with something that is in the tonic and it feels like it. Um, so then I have, we have the cadential relationship. Okay. And the cadential relationship um, is really is an incomplete and a complete cadence. So an incomplete cadence again is something that doesn't end on one and then a complete cadence ends on one. Okay. So um, the first phrase clearly expresses a harmonic dependence on the next phrase. All right. 
And then we have a sense of need of one or more of those uh, more phrases to complete the musical idea. So with that, this is the antecedent. It ends on five and this ends on one. And I'm going to go back to it and play it one more time. Just one time through. <laughs> Ends on one. Okay. Any questions? Let's listen to another one here. Okay. Um, this is the Schubert Sonata, and it's Opus. 120 in its it's sonata number 13 in a major um and if, uh, before we look at it here what we have is we have two cadences and uh do you remember i i told you that that generally things in the book told us that that phrases come in twos fours and eights eights are really fast fours are in moderate and twos are really slow, okay? So, and much of it just so you know is based on vocal music. How long can somebody sing something in a single breath? And that was really the idea. So here we have a cadence right here. Um, and I'm gonna kinda do this. Because notice this is the pickup, or what's also known as the anacrusis. It's a couple of notes prior to the downbeat, all right? And, and I'm sorry that I didn't quite get this right here. Let's see if I can move it over. Uh, this is the pickup or anacrusis to the next measure. So we're in the key of A, and I want you to notice this ends on, this is 5-1, all right? Um, so we basically have an E chord here and, and an A chord here. Uh, but I want you to notice that scale degree three is in the soprano, all right? And then we have another phrase that, that comes in, and it's, in, it's kind of the same thing as the other one, but it ends on one, okay? And, and that makes it more conclusive, all right? I don't, this isn't as easy to hear as something that ends on five, okay? Um, here we go. I'm going to play this. I would argue that there are maybe three phrases there. There's three three phrases. Yeah. Where where do you see where do you see three phrases? Give me oh. some. Oh. Okay. Well, let me make sure that there are because just uh, in measure six, uh, I hear. I see, never, I see measure six. Right. Uh, just hear. Just listening to it, I hear sort of a thought there. Right. But now looking to see if there's a cadence because it's a little bit different actually than what you already heard it's, it's right kind of the same but it's a little bit different mm -hmm. uh, what you're really probably hearing is a semi phrase maybe yes okay f a sharp c yeah it really doesn't have a cadential style of movement in fact it has a sharp on it okay mm -hmm. See, I want you to notice it actually, and and th and this is really not the the subject I want to talk about at the moment, but this has actually come up with some chromatic chords and is doing something different. Although the rhythms are the same, the rhythms are all the same. It's got some different notes on it. Let's listen to it one more time, okay? Yes, sir. Very 
very peaceful in the beginning compared to the second one, I'll agree. Okay, so, um, and I'll be honest with you, here's what I do if I'm having trouble hearing something, I start counting the measures. And I look for things that happen normally. And phrases again, this is why I said phrases are in twos, fours, and eights. This is clearly two different things because we have a cadence here. Uh -huh. Feels like a cadence. And we have a cadence here. And this feels a lot stronger to me. Yes. Partly because it ends on scale degree one, but because of all this turmoil here. And then the, the chromatic notes and then it, 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 it disappears right here and stops. Okay? Yeah. So. Uh, let's take a listen to the Chopin here. All right. Um, this one is a lot faster. Okay. So if, if you think about this, um, there's eight measures here and, and eight more measures here. It's a lot faster and most likely you're gonna, you're not gonna hear the cadence real well, partly because of the speed of it and partly because of the way the, the melody rises and then falls, rises. See how the, it kind of keeps going up and up and up to about here, mm -hmm. down there and then it doesn't fall really far and then it starts all over and does the same thing kind of. Here we go, let's listen to it. There's an intro at the beginning. Right here. So you kind of get an idea of this. Um, and, and when we look at this, this is an E flat. This, this goes 5, 1, and E flat, okay? Um, and it does end on an E flat, so you could say it's a perfect authentic cadence because here's the E flat, okay? But it has this figure in here, all right? So rhythmically, it's weak because it terminates on measure on, on the last beat. Beat three. Rhythmically, it's weak. All right. Important because that we, we learned that in the last chapter. Or so I think actually maybe the first chapter, not quite sure. But here, when, when I go through this, this again is five, one, and it terminates on the downbeat and stops. Sure. Okay. And that's really what the difference is. Of course, we have. Um, um, excuse me, uh, I'm going to say, this. that's really what the difference of, of, of this is. It terminates on the downbeat with the uh, CL degree one. Here, here we, he just added some, some no, a, a non-chord tone there. So that's uh, F, and that's G, that's in the, the key, and then passing tone then here. So plus the oh, rhythm so. is the same. Okay. Plus the rhythm is the same and condensal, like condensal rhythmic endings usually Absolutely. it makes them strong. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take and I'm gonna circle this note right here. Oh man. This is now driving me crazy. I'm gonna have to get a new copy of this. All right, I'm gonna circle this note right here. All right, it's a it, it's a non chord tone. It's approached by same tone and left by step up. Do you know what that is? Um, it's an is it is an ar arpeggio. It's not an arpeggio. Not an arpeggio. It's an appoggiatura. No, an appoggiatura. 
uh, approached by skip or leap and left by step, usually in the opposite direction. Okay. This is approached by same tone, common tone. Most mm. often you see these as suspensions. Suspensions. Approached mm. by common tone and and but but then resolves going down. This resolves going up. All right. Oh it has a different name, right? Yes. Yes. So. It's called a retardation. Rit. R I T. Mm -hmm. right. This is common. You, you see this in, in, in church music, particularly at the very end of a cadence, you have a note that's there, and then they play it again, and then it will be the leading tone, by the way, because you just had five, and then they hold that leading tone over into the tonic chord, and then it moves up. You want to what I'm saying? So uh, if I had, if I was just playing like the G chord, and then I would move it to C chord, uh, that's really a bad uh, representation of it. Uh, there's five, and this is one. All right, so you would have something like five, uh, and I'm going to put it down here. Here's a five. And then you get to one, and you got five, And it resolves up. And I'm not a piano player, so I can't just whip it out. All right, so you kind of get the idea there? Yes, sir. All right. So let's let's kind of move forward to the melodic relationship. And I've already been talking about the melodic relationship. All right. So all of these that we looked at before had like the same idea going in each phrase. So we have we have this Schumann here, the wild riser, and uh, we have four measures here and four measures here. All right. And if you look at it, it's got a pickup. There's the pickup note to, to the next one. And this measure is the same. This measure is the same. And I'm looking at the rhythm solely right now. Sure. This measure is the same. And this measure is the same rhythmically. All right. Now, granted, there, there are some pitch differences. Okay. For instance, um, you know, you've got the G sharp there and the G sharp there again. All right. So. Uh, oh, I got the G sharp there, but you have a G sharp here, which you don't have in here, but the rhythm is all the same. So, um, a frequent source of unity in a period is, is the use of similar melodic contours in two phrases. And that's what we're looking at is the contour. All right. When the contour is the same, and I'm not going to say the same all the way, because he says similar. Often, if you just get the first two measures having the same contour, this one and this one having the same contour. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. People do usually recognize it. Pardon me? People, if you get the first two measures to be the same in both phrases, then people can, you, people can hear. The, you yeah, know. the first couple measures, they can tell that it's, Parallel, and then what happens is often they change the end because uh, depending on how they, they want it to fall and stop, maybe the other one went flying through um, or, or whatever. And we'll get to some of these examples, but I'm just gonna rumble through some examples right here. Um, this is the um, Wild Rider, let's see. This is from the album for the young. Okay, and I'm going to just tell you that in this period of music, phrases are, if you put a phrase together and you get another phrase together, and they're called a period, really. And periods are often repeated, okay? Not always. Like sometimes I say they're gonna repeat it and then they don't. The further we get into uh, the romantic period, that doesn't happen as much. And so we, we have this similar uh, uh, type of material on the top. And uh, so, so really, it just is parallel. It's it's illustrating what's called parallel construction. So, parallel construction is a frequent source of unity in a period that they use similar melodic contours in two phrases. 
could be three phrases, but two for the moment. Um, so then, then um, here's a, here's an, um, an, another type where we really have an antecedent followed by a consequent. All right, and they're in parallel motion. Um, Let me make sure here. Oh, yes, I do have it. All right, so they're they're the, exactly the same thing, but they're transposed to some degree. See how this starts on G and this starts on A? All right. So the beginning is transposed through the downbeat, and then it jumps right back into where it was. So let's take a listen to this. And. Um, Here we go. All right, so we're getting further in the century, but that's just played a single phrase. And then it's played again, except for the beginning of it is transposed, so it kind of Start in a different in a different right. piece. So, okay, because right, so on the phone, uh, someone's on the. You phone. know they had it on the news. They say the uh, hometown consolidated school district has been shut down, and and then uh, who's I on think the phone? Do you know? I, I, I think or, that's Carl. Uh, somebody's I, asking for prayer for him. It, it show know, up on the uh, screen. Who's talking? Man's and so. Uh, Carl, you got Carl, Carl, Carl. Huh? I got, I got a what? Mute. I'm oh, right here. I'm oh. right here. I'm listening. Someone I've been listening the whole time. Background. Is someone talking oh. in the background? Okay. okay. We're all hearing that, and that's what you should be hearing too. Well, I guess you probably can't tell. Thank you, Carl. Um, I got it. Yes, sir. So, so yeah, if you got people around that are going to be talking, you should be. You should really. This is to everybody. Ha have yourself muted, and then when you need to talk, unmute. Okay. I understand when we're sitting at home or whatever that other things are going on. All right. So um, we're still looking at. I just want to make sure we're still looking at the the book right here, right? Mm -hmm. So we really have the same cadence here and here. And this, by the way, is a pickup into the next one. All right. Mm -hmm. um, So, so the, really the difference in the phrase was the very beginning. So that's, again, parallel construction. So then I have the Schumann, which I actually don't have, okay? But if you look at this, all right, uh, we're in the key of, uh, let's just say, F sharp, C sharp, D. We're either in D major or we're in B minor. So it ends on a D, so we're in D major, right? So here we have measure one, measure two, measure three, measure four. Ends on scale degree. Five, so it's some sort of a five chord, and then and then we have a repeat of the same thing, all right, up through two measures. Uh, so we have only the first two measures. That's the exact same thing, and then we have a complete break off going to the cadence. All right, so so that's really this idea of of often only having part of it is still considered parallel construction. All right. Um, so it says, when the melodies of the phrases of a period are noticeably different from each other, we say the phrases are in contrasting construction. All right? So, um, uh, so right here, this is, this is referring to this. It does say that the transposition of the first uh, the second phrase begins with the transposition of first, and the parallelism is never, nevertheless obvious. All right. So, uh, so then we have some sort of other thing called contrasting construction. Um, Three twenty-two. Oh, lovely. Um, give me a chance to uh, find the page number three. 
Um, so let's just take a listen to this, um, number 19 and see what he's talking about. So this is Mendelssohn symphony number four. It's, it's known as the Italian symphony symphony. And this, this also symbolizes something else, but we're listening to it for contrast and construction. Um, so let's look at this. Uh, it's going pretty fast, so it's probably eight measures, and here we have eight measures, and it pauses right here, and then here's the pickup right here, and it kind of looks similar right in the very beginning, but it's clearly evident that the phrase is different, and there's just a little motive that's repeated and repeated and then expanded, then back to repeated, then the expanded version of it is, and it terminates right here. There's a double bar, okay? So... Let's listen to it again. Notice that this first eight measures is the first phrase, and the second one is noticeably different. Okay. Oh, sorry. All right, so you kind of get the idea? Mm -hmm. All right, now I got to scroll back to wherever we were. Uh, tonal relationship, 56. All right, so then we talk about the tonal relationship. All right, and... Um, Um, we have we have two types of, of of periods periods that don't modulate. They're called non-modulating periods. It, it, periods that modulate to a new key, called modulating periods. So, a non-modulating period is a period that begins and ends in the same key. All right. Um, a modulating period does not begin and end in the same key. Okay. That's not that there might not have been some temporary modulation. It's just temporarily tonicizing something in the middle of it. It's still in the modulates into. Okay. If, it, if it yeah if if it begins and ends in the same key, the period. All right, it's a non-modulating period. Even if one of the phrases temporarily starts moving towards something else. Um, but generally we see them as non-modulating. But if it begins in one key and the very end is in the next, a different key, then it's a modulating period, all right? Um, so if we look at the uh, Tchaikovsky walls here, all right? Um, this is an E flat, okay? And um, so we have five one here. So I'm gonna go back to my little uh, idea of trying to figure out how to do text. And uh, life doesn't love me here. I figured it out at one time. Oh, look at that. There's a text rule. All right, let me move that over here. Let's go. This is five. And mm -hmm. this is one. And it's in E flat, OK? Um, OK, so. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I don't know why I decided to do that. Apologize. You got to make the box wider. Uh, make the box thinner. I somehow made the box wider. I mean, uh, longer. Driving me crazy. Well, you get the idea. This is five and this is one, right? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So then we start all over here. Um, and um, oh, I don't want to do that. Command C, Command C. Driving me crazy. All right, there it goes. Um, text tool. I'm just going to start here. I was going to start there. Here is the text I wanted. And um, so this is an E flat, E flat, and this is the one chord right here. All right. I don't know why I put a comma in there. All right. Um, it automatically did it. I don't think I hit a comma. Anyways, so we continue with the one chord and the one chord pivots to become the six chord, all right? So so now we're in a new key. Um, and uh, the E flat is the six chord of what key? And if you, if you just think about it, it's probably gonna be the dominant key, all right? Or it's gonna be the relative minor, okay? So, so in this case, if it's a six chord, it's a major chord, so it's probably minor. And this is where you need to know your um, Roman numerals in, in key, in, in, you know, in major and minor to, to kind of understand it. But what this does is it pivots to G minor, and I'm just, this is not the best way to write it, but right now I don't have anything good to do it with. So I'm just gonna write G, and this, this one chord becomes a six, all right? Sorry. So it becomes a six. We're in G minor and it goes, and, and all the way down here, it goes D. This is the five chord, five, one. All right. You see it? And, and here's that leading tone hanging over and moving up. That's another, that's that retardation. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's listen to it. Uh, the Tchaikovsky Waltz. And. Let us listen to it one more time here, all right? But let's go back and look at it. Now, this is this is a uh, um some people might might say that this is a phrase here, all right? Um, the book is explaining it at the moment as a sub-phrase. Now, there's more than one way it's going to get, but do you really have a cadence here? And you really don't. You have a one chord elaborated all the way through here, and, and then you have a new chord here, and then you have the five chord here, and the one chord here, all right? So remember, uh, the three different ways of of developing a phrase, a single chord followed by a cadence, elaboration of a single chord followed by a cadence when that's what this is, okay? Mm -hmm. um, because, you, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is, this is kind of like the, the cadential area here, but this is 5-1. But it's, it's a single chord, basically a single chord followed by a cadence, and here is the cadential progression. And then the last one is, um, uh, uh, the cadence formula, which is one, four, five, one, or one, two, five, one, really, but the scale degrees of the base would be one, four, five, one. So remember that. So this continues on here and it cadences there. Let's listen to it again. It's not that easy to hear. The further you get into music in like Tchaikovsky and things like that, that are moving fast, it's harder to hear. And you got to start, and then you got to start learning to count measures. Okay. But using your ears is the best thing you can do. Here we go. So that's the idea of a of a modulating period. We have two things together, it, it, and it goes off into something else after this, that begin in one key and end in another key. Okay. All right, so that's a modulating period. Ooh, let me just not worry about that. 
symmetrical and asymmetrical periods. All right, so um, let me turn my page over here. So you notice we're doing a lot of listening, and listening is the most important thing you can do when you're looking at the, the stuff here. Listen for the cadences, and if you can't hear them very well, then start counting, okay? But remember that most phrases are in a group of two phrases that make a period. So here we have asymmet symmetrical and asymmetrical periods. So symmetrical periods, and this is important to understand, remember we had asymmetrical phrases and or we had symmetrical phrases and asymmetrical phrases uh, in the last chapter or so and 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 symmetrical phrases not this symmetrical phrases were phrases two four and eight all right and asymmetrical phrases were something other than twos fours and eights they could have been sixes. so they're not even numbers all right they're twos fours and eights that was symmetrical phrases now we're at symmetrical and asymmetrical periods. This is something different, okay? And right. symmetrical periods, are, are you trying to ask a question or are you just saying, all right? I was just saying, all right. Right. This is great. We're all good. Symmetrical periods consist of phrases of equal number of measures. They could be three plus three, four plus four, eight plus eight, something like that, okay? Here it says three plus three, four plus four, five, five plus five, four plus four plus four. That's a three phrase period, which we'll get to, et cetera, all right? Or asymmetrical periods consist of phrases of different lengths, like you could have three and five, or three and four, or four and five, or things like that, okay? So that's different than asymmetrical, symmetrical and asymmetrical uh, period, um, phrases, all right? Do we understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, because this is a point that people get confused a little bit because they, they think back to asymmetrical phrases, but, but we're talking about periods. Okay. Um, so when I, when I take a look at the Schubert here, all right, um, this is really right here. Uh, let's hope it doesn't fly away from me again. I'm just gonna draw it right here. All right, and uh, I'm, I'm drawing a line. Notice I'm drawing a line at these cadences. This is a four measure phrase here. And this is scale degree two going to scale degree one. And it's pretty fast, I mean, um, that it goes to one. But this is a phrase, and then it starts the phrase all over again. See, see, that, see that similar contour? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's important to understand. And so it, it goes to about all the way through to here. And then we have a repeat of the cadence. All right. So let's take a listen to this. Oh, number seven or number eight. This is... Um, number eight. Here we go, I hope. Here it is. Cadence. Mm -hmm. right. So, so what they did is they they made it they made one of the phrases longer, okay, by repeating the cadence. All right. So remember last chapter, uh, there were three ways that we listed to, uh, to make a symmetrical phrase asymmetrical. Uh, and one of them was after the cadence, repeat the cadence, right? Okay. So prolongation of the tonic chord and, uh, Offhand, I'm not quite remember what the third one was, but there were three of them. They were in your terms. Okay. So now let me ask you this. Uh, when you did your terms, were you able to see the grades for the multiple choice ones and things like that right away? 
I mean, yes. yeah, okay. So then you're going to have to go back to look at the ones that uh, you had to fill in. All right. Because um, I had to go look at them. So just so you know. So make sure you go back and look at this because it does contain some information. All right. Um, so this is a, this is a, a, an asymmetrical period. It contains uh, phrases of different lengths. All right. So now we got really three. Uh, prior to that, we always, we always had phrases of the same length. They were symmetrical, and then that's an asymmetrical one. So now we've got some three and four phrase periods. So what's a three phrase phrase period? Um, so a three phrase period really consists of three phrases. Duh, okay. And the cadences generally progress from weak to strong, and that's what's really important here, all right? You're not going to have a weak one and a really strong one and then a weak one again, because that's probably something else. You're going to have a weak one, maybe something that's a little bit stronger, and then usually a much stronger cadence. We're a four-phrase period. Well, let's listen to a three-phrase one, and then we'll talk about the difference. So we have the Barber of Seville here. Let me find my page. Um, yep. I want you to notice that uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how many measures there are. And there's 12 measures, all right? So with it being 12, even though I already know this is a three-phrase period, but I would still go back and, well, okay, this is some section and it's 12. I would, I would just count, I would divide it, you know, up into fours, four, eight, 12. So we have three phrases here, all right? And I want you to notice that this phrase and this phrase are, in par are parallel, okay? Uh, they might not be on the same pitch. Notice this pitch moved up here, um, but their contour contour is the same. All right, and it's in G major, and uh, it looks like it, uh, uh, it 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 terminates on uh, it terminates on the dominant. So it's a half cadence. Okay. Uh, oh. Here we got right here, the same thing, but it's kind of at a different pitch level. Notice that the notes are even different down here, and um, we have we have a five one here, and it's a just an authentic, authentic cadence, uh, and it's an authentic cadence partly because um, it uh, it ends on a B, which is scale degree three as opposed to scale degree one. And then here we have a contrasting phrase, all right? And it ends on scale degree one, and it basically goes five one here, all right? Uh, in fact, it's two, six, five, one. Uh -huh. And here's, here's an instance of the cadence formula. So listen for it. This is scale degree four in the bass. This is scale degree, uh, let me make sure I can see it right. Yeah. No, that's not. I'm, I'm, yeah, really, that's... I'm, I'm really sorry. I, 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 my computer is quite small. And it's the same note, okay? Here it is right here. Sorry. Uh, scale degree four in the bass, all right? And this is the five, six, four chord. Mm -hmm. Kind of moving to, which is the one, six, four, which we call five, because you're on the, dominant scale degree here, which is D. So you have the four chord, scale degree four, moving to scale degree five, and moving to one. That is the cadence formula. It's in the bass, all right? So let's take a listen to this. Am I, are you understanding what we're talking about here? We're just putting things together. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. All right. All right, so we've already heard this once before, so now we're looking at it for something else. Let's see. Number five. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you. 
It's repeated in, with a different instrument. All right, I didn't I didn't record the whole thing, but I'm I'm up on that. Sorry, I heard it. You you got the idea. And and I want you to notice that that was repeated and often these things are repeated and and later on in this chapter we're going to figure out that these repeats with uh particularly with variation, but these repeats uh hold hold us some sort of weight of a larger thing, all right? And uh we'll get to that sooner than later. Um, all right, so you get the idea here. You have three phrases. You have a half cadence right here. You have an, an authentic cadence that ends on scale degree three. And then you have a, a perfect authentic cadence, all right? Perfect authentic cadences end on scale degree one in the soprano, all right? So three phrases, three phrase period. The, the cadences generally progress from from weak to strong, all right? All right, so, um, take a look at the Beethoven, it actually covers two pages here, let's see. Can't quite get it all on my screen, let me see. Um, Um, all right, I just made it smaller. Sorry about that. I was looking for the shortcut, but apparently the reader doesn't have a easy switch. All right, so we have, we have one, two, three phrases here. And um, first thing I do again, uh, actually we have, we, have, we have three systems, but I count the number of measures. And if you look down, here it's 16 measures, right? So I'm either going to have two eighths or um, four four fours, all right? And when you look here, when we listen to it, 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 it should be more obvious because it is Beethoven. He's more obvious than some of these other pieces. Right here is, and I hope I don't jump away, 59. the first cadence, all right? Right here is the second cadence. Right here is the third cadence. And of course, right here is the fourth cadence. All right, when you look at these, I want you to notice that um, Just gonna make sure here that I don't. Okay, when I when I when I look at this right here, I got this right here, and I'm gonna look over here. Do you see this right here? Mm -hmm. All right. It's kind of the same as this. It's it's when you listen to it, it's really the same. It's just uh, it's not verbatim. All right. Um, but you have. What what you do have is you have this measure right here. Do you see that? That's that measure right there. The, the yeah. measure that's changed is this measure. All right. But you have this measure right here, and uh, followed by this measure here, which is the same as that. Then you have this right here. Phrase two it starts at measure five. All right. Because we count downbeats. This is an anacrusis. There's a whole bunch of notes, otherwise known as a pickup, but but in theory we call it an anacrusis and it's a series of notes leading into the phrase here's the same thing but it's not a series of notes but it's still called an anacrusis we know that from pop music it's a pickup all right so here it is right here and if i go down to measure such and such we have similar anacrusis and we have similar phrases okay so so this in theory is a four phrase period all right so a four phrase period, and he doesn't do a good job of actually telling you what it is. All right. Um, 
but it's a period that consists of four phrases. Where often, this is what he says, often the first and the third phrases are in parallel construction. All right? Parallel construction is, is defined really as a portion of, of the first phrase comes back and reappears in the second phrase. So we don't have the first measure here in, in this right here. We have something else. But we do have similar pitch structure where it leaps up and then goes on. And then we have the parallelism right here. All right. So, so I, I kind of define the four phrase period as the same as he said, except I say a period consisting of four phrases, often the first and third phrases, and then I can quote, and often the second and the fourth phrases are in parallel construction. So the first and third are in parallel. Um, the second and the fourth in parallel are in parallel, and the fourth phrase will contain the strongest cadence. All right. right. And if you look at it, and and you're really comparing it to this second phrase right here. See this phrase right here? The cadence ends rhythmically weak right here. It doesn't end right here. It ends right here. See how this really ends on the downbeat? This is just a this eighth note looking down is just a uh, a bass move. It's, it's a displacement of the note. All right. So let's take a listen to this, and I hope that this will uh, give you a better idea. Right here. So, now I did not really hear much difference when this phrase came back in compared to this phrase because I still kept hearing the melody. Maybe it was slightly different on a pitch, all right? But I was hearing that melody. Let's listen to it again. It's really hard to detect that it changes. So when I think about this, um, this is my opportunity to draw something and I have nothing to draw. This is A right here. So I'm just gonna, um, come up with a text box here. Let's see, text. Yeah, you put it down here. All right, we'll have to just leave it here. All right, so we have we have the first phrase is A. It shouldn't have a period there. Um, let me take that back. It's not an uppercase A, it's a lowercase A. And it's just putting this in. Then we have the second phrase that is B, okay? And then And then down in measure nine, we start up A again. All right, but it's really called A prime. So we put a little notch up there, A prime, followed by B prime. All right, and generally we would in enclose these in lines that kind of look like, um, I'm back here. I'm not going to do a very good job of this. Uh, I must have pressed the wrong thing. Uh, all right, and then we got something that looks like this. Ah, that's not what I want. Let's go this way. Uh, 
And, and I'm, I'm sorry about that, but each one of these would have a little box around it saying it's a phrase. And it's just like the example we looked at. Now I'm, now I'm going to go look for it. Um, when it was two-part binary form. And that's the beginning of what's called drawing a diagram. And drawing a diagram of a large piece is really important. Chapter one, chapter two, all right. All right, I'm on page 59. Here it is, here's what I'm talking about right here. Put a phrase, a phrase, a phrase, and those, those, those things right there, okay? So we had two phrases, make a period, two periods make a part, and two parts make two part binary form. So you have a phrase and a phrase, and in our case, we have a four phrase one, all right? A four phrase period. Um, which is really, I'll be honest with you, it's this phrase followed by this phrase, and some people will say this phrase and this phrase, but really this cadence is not very good. And the reason the cadence is not very good, and now I'm going to flip back to the other page, which is 58. Oh, and 35. Okay, All right. Um, the Beethoven right here. Uh, partly because we have a half cadence here, we have a half cadence here, we have a half cadence here, and then we have a perfect authentic cadence here, all right? Um, this piece is an A flat, it goes 5-1 right at the beginning, all right? And we're going to end on 5. Here we go. We're ending on some sort of 5 chord. See, we got a pair of E flats there. Here we got an E flat there. We're ending on a 5. Here we got that pair of E flats again, and here we have five, one, all right? So really what we have is we have three half cadences. They're all kind of the same, and then we have something that terminates it. And let's listen to it one more time, please. No, this is the Beethoven piano sonata. I think we haven't listened to it yet, maybe. That's the first cadence. Half cadence again. We're in nine. explain one more thing that happened there all right remember we were talking about um, periods asymmetrical or, or, or not asymmetrical periods modulating and non-modulating periods this is a non-modulating period sort of all right but it fits the definition of begins in one key and ends in the and a different in the same key but right here, this sounds like a perfect authentic cadence, all right? This is five, this is scale degree four, this is scale degree five, this is scale degree one in another key. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Sir. Now, you could have analyzed it as this modulates, and then, but then it just goes right back to the, the original key. All it is is a temporary tonicization of the other key, all right? And you basically have, you know, like, like a 5-1 in that key. It's like a 5-5 five of five going to 5. Mm -hmm. Understand that. 5-5 five of five going to 5. 
all right? So, so in, in A flat, the dominant chord is E flat. What's the dominant of E flat? B, B flat, right? Mm -hmm. B flat. Yeah, it, it, that's actually not there. Uh, it's right here, all right? You have B flat, D flat, and then it's an F flat. So it's, 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 uh, uh, yeah, it's some sort of diminished chord, but it sounds more like, and I'm not going to tell you that's really right, but it sounds like a stronger cadence. Let's listen to it one more time so you can disagree with me. Let's see. Hit play. Here we go. Now listen for this stronger style happening. All right, so you get the idea. What makes this a four phrase period really is there's three half cadences. And then we have the final one. All right, that's about all I can really talk about here, except that there's one other thing I want to mention here. Uh, and it's something called, how did I get the composite part forms? No, take this out of the way. Move this up in here. I'm in simple part forms. Sorry. It's here, and I just got to get to it. Description of a period, all right? I, I need you to learn how to do a concise description of a period and all of that and the terminology that goes along with it. And here is a concise description. It says, a sample description of a period might read as follows. The structural unit is an eight measure non-modulating period comprising of two phrases, which are four plus four. So that means you have an eight measure for, uh, period there. Four, four plus four. First phrase is four, second phrase is four. In parallel construction, or it could be in, you know, it could be in contrasting instruction, whatever. And the cadences are, he's writing P H and PA. We're using HC for half cadence and PAC, because I'm assuming that's what you learned. PAC for perfect authentic cadence. So you can, you, can, you can put this into anything, all right? The last thing we looked at was, was, 12, or was 16 measures long. So the structural unit is a 16 measure, non-modulating period comprising of four phrases, four plus four plus four plus four in you, I, I would say contrasting construction uh, overall, and you can elaborate on it with the later on. Um, the cadences are half cadence, half cadence, half cadence, and perfect authentic cadence. That tells the reader exactly what it is. All right. So, if if, if something was eight, eight measure phrases, we would say uh, maybe it was modulating. We have a, a sixteen measure modulating period comprising of two phrases, eight plus eight, in, you know, parallel or contrasting instruction, whatever they are, and what the cadences are. It's a very simple little sentence here. And you should, you should highlight that, write it down, because you're going to be using it over and over and over. Not exactly like that, but this one's really common. 
All right. All of the first couple of phrases that we looked at at the beginning of today were exactly that. All right. So we left off with the Beethoven in A flat. So we got, we got, uh, we're on parallel period. All right. So if you weren't here when I took attendance, please stay around. If you have a question, please stay around. I'll take the attendance first. Um, and otherwise everybody will see it. Oh, wait, you know what? There's, there is, there is a homework assignment. You, you're aware of that, right? Um, no, what's the homework assignment? It's, it's in module three. Module three is up and you got to go look at it. Every week there's going to be a new module and you okay. got to go look at it. Okay. Okay. So uh, I will show it to you here. Let's see. Um, new share. Uh, I don't know. Wait, I used to be looking at module three right here. We okay, have a playlist, which is the exact play. This is just like the last one which is an exact playlist of what's going on. Um, module three chapter terms, module three assignment. Okay. All right. See you later alligators. And if you weren't here, make sure you hang on for attendance. All right. All right. Let's see, let me stop share. All right. So I'm assuming everybody was already here since I'm the only one left. Have a good day. Oh, Hubbard. Are you here? It says your name. Hubbard, are you here? Hello. Hey, Hubbard, how you doing? Hi. Good. I got you for attendance now. Do you got any questions? Um No. You cut out. I'm sorry. Hello. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, that last homework assignment. Uh, can we, st with that we had to print out and analyze that piece, can we still turn that in? You better turn it in fast, because I got to grade it. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, listen. Mm -hmm. Keep doing the good work that you're doing in the class. Don't listen to the people that have been in the class three times. All right? All right. Yes, you're sir. The only, you're the only one on top of this right now. I'm trying one. Well, you're on top of it. Thank you. You scored a perfect score, I believe, in the last uh, terms, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, they're pretty simple because if you figure out my system, sometimes I have four questions in a row with mm -hmm. four answers in a row. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So just keep doing what you're doing and do the things I ask. You'll go a long ways in this class, okay? Yes, sir. Letting you know. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye. Ending the meeting.